Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, one of the common complaints that I get from a lot of you guys who watch my videos on this channel is that some of my videos are a little bit too long, okay? It's all well and good kind of knowing how to pass language paper one, but kind of me going over a question in 20 plus minutes, it's a little bit too long for you guys, okay? So I've listened to some of the feedback and what I want to do in this video today is to actually give you a summary of question number four in the language paper one and I want to summarize it in a nutshell within five minutes, okay? So I want to show you guys within five minutes what you should expect of question number four and the four steps you should take when approaching this question consistently in the language paper one exams. Now, always begin with the end in mind, okay? Number one, always remember that this question in uh, paper one is worth 20 marks. It's worth half of the marks available for section A in language paper one. And remember that it always tests your OO4, your evaluation skills. Do you agree with the student statement? Do you partly agree or do you disagree? The examiners don't tend to care that much whether you agree or whether you disagree or so on. It's more about the quality of your discussion and the analysis and the techniques that you refer to when you're either agreeing, partly agreeing or disagreeing. A good way is to approach this is you could maybe sit in the middle, right, and use some tentative language like perhaps the student is right because of this. However, they might equally perhaps not be completely right because of this other technique, okay? You can do that or maybe just make your life easier and agree with the statement because the student statement never tends to contradict what's going on in the extract. That's step number one for approaching question number four of the language paper one exam. Now, question number two, it, or rather step number two is try to pick at least three quotations from the extract you were given to evaluate. Make sure that the quotations are not next to each other, okay? Work through the entire part of this extract. And it's always from the second half of the extract. You're not told to look at the whole source. It's always the second half to the end, okay? So, of course, when you're going through and selecting your quotations, pick something from the middle, something from closer to the end, and then something else from closer to the end, or two things from right at the end of the passage, okay? And, of course, make sure you make references to language and structure and how this supports the student statement or doesn't support or why you partly agree. Now, the third step in answering question number four is, my suggestion is a good chunk of writing would be at least three or four peel paragraphs. When I say peel paragraphs, I mean point evidence explanation link. Now, as you're working and writing your response, move through the extract chronologically. Your first pill paragraph would be from the early part of the middle. Your second pill paragraph would be from slightly later on in the middle. Your third pill paragraph could be closer to the end. And then your fourth and final pill paragraph could be taken to the end. And remember that the second E in your pill paragraph should be super developed. This is where the bulk of your marks are, okay? So you need to add lots of techniques and obviously go into lots of depth analyzing and developing the explanation within each of your peel paragraphs. Now, the fourth and final step is always have some go-to language and structure techniques that you should anticipate will show up in any fiction extract that you're presented with. In terms of my go-to techniques, which I always recommend to my students, is in terms of language, go for and look for, as you're reading the extract, your simile, metaphor, alliteration, imagery, and your semantic field, that's language. However, your go-to structure techniques should be repetition, listing, your one word sentence, as well as zooming in or zooming out, and juxtaposing what might happen in the middle of the extract versus the end of the extract. Those should be your go-to structural techniques. So I've tried to keep this to five minutes long. I hope this helps in terms of summarizing question number four in language paper one in a nutshell. Thank you so much for listening.